Natalia Dmitruk says she's not a hero. And in the freer Ukraine of today, her kind of courage isn't required to tell the truth. These days, there's no need, then, to contradict the newsreader or deny the government-approved news. The election results have been falsified, she signed last year. Our president is Yushchenko. I'm disgusted that I was forced to translate lies until now. We caught up with Dmitruk a year after her rebellion. She explained it by saying she wanted her deaf parents at home and people like them to know what was really going on. Yes, of course I was afraid, she says. I could have lost my job. The government could have put me into asphalt. There was no punishment. Instead, her bravery inspired some of Ukraine's journalists, who issued public apologies during the revolution and promised to tell the truth. So the sign language protest helped non-deaf Ukrainians hear about the spreading revolt in their country. But Natalia Dmitruk's silent revolt didn't just affect the way the media covered events, it was also a gesture of liberation for the country's deaf and hard of hearing. A birthday for a young artist. The deaf community here is small and closely knit. Before the fraudulent vote last year, many of its members were bribed or frightened by the government into voting for its candidate. They had no good sources of information on politics other than Dmitruk's broadcasts. <laughs> For us deaf people, it was a real revelation, he says, because we had no information about what was going on. What she did was heroic. And a source of pride for the deaf. For once, they had the inside story in Ukraine before anybody else. Nick Spicer, CBC News, Kiev.